Your Pets Radio, your go-to destination to learn all about your four-legged companions. Hosted by pet health and longevity expert, Lauriston Crockett III. Your Pets Radio is the perfect stop for insightful pet news, the greatest viral videos, and to learn all about the initiatives (coughs) you should get involved with. Hey, this is Lauriston Crockett, and we have a show for you today. We're going to be talking about the truth about spaying and neutering, you know, it's going to cause a little bit of controversy, but it's also going to cause a lot of education. So please stay tuned. But first, let's have a little fun because when we come back, the mics are going to be hot. Hi. <laughs> hey, Lorston, we are here at K9 Cinemas. There's Bear trying to get me. Um, get ready to drink a whole bunch of free wine, all you can drink. Of course, at K9 Cinemas, it's all you can drink free wine, puppies, and movies. We are getting ready to watch the movie Bolt, and next weekend, next Friday, we're going to do a 2 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 8 o'clock showing. So just checking in with Your Pets Radio. Love you guys. Hey, Eric, we love you too. Let me tell you something. Max and I love going to the movies. You guys got to check out K9 Cinemas. It is a blast, and free wine, you betcha. Listen, it's time to get serious. This has been a passion of mine because I've lost two pets because of the side effects of spaying and neutering. Joe Cocker died of a horrible skin cancer uh, back when I was actually going to be a Franciscan monk at a time and he was my companion. Then also right after that, I got Samantha, my beautiful English Springer Spaniel, and we were starting competition and at two years old, bam, hypothyroidism hits. Also skin conditions start happening and it was a very, very tough life for her. Then I was able to start working in the peptide technologies and working with the gift for life. What I want to talk about today is a study that came back out in 2013 from University of California, Davis. Here it is. It talks about the side effects of spaying and neutering. And what I'm going to do is read a little abstract right here about what this actually does. Neutering at the age uh, at which a dog is neutered may affect the animal's risk for developing certain cancers and joint diseases, according to the study of Golden Retrievers by a team of researchers at the University of California, Davis. And the reason why they use Golden Retrievers is because it's one of the number one dogs in America and they're also used as a service dog. So they want to use a dog that was well-rounded and well-loved in America. The study, which examined the health records of 759 golden retrievers, found a surprising doubling of hip dysplasia among with male dogs neutered before one year of age. It also talks about the increase of three different forms of cancer, Addison's disease, Cushing's disease, and the list goes on. While these, while results of new studies are revealing, Hart, Mr. Hart from the University of California, Davis said, the relationship between neutering and disease free remains a complex issue. For example, the increased uh, incident of joint disease among early neutered dogs and the combination of the effect of neutering of young dogs, growth plates, well as the increase of weight on the joints in the commonly seen in neutered dogs. Dog owners in the United States are overwhelmingly choosing to neuter dogs as a large part to prevent uh, the overpopulation and avoid. And we understand about the overpopulation of pets in America, but we now have an advancement in veterinary care for sterilization of pets that leave in these life-giving hormones. In Europe, however, the study goes on to say, neutering is generally avoided by owners and trainers and not promoted by animal health authorities. During the past decade, some studies have indicated that neutering can have several adverse health effects for certain dog breeds. These studies examine individual diseases using data drawn from the breed or pulled from several breeds. We have an overpopulation of pets in America. We're not doing our part to keep these pets from having these kittens and these puppies. We love them, don't we? But you know what? Right now, we need to really think about what we're doing, and we need to take responsibility as pet owners to make sure that dogs and cats are not breeding. And the first thing we need to do is also go to the shelters and adopt. Did you know that even with your pure breeds, with the AKC, you know there's approximately 325,000 purebreds that are dumped in shelters every year? This is unacceptable. And I'm not happy about it because I actually had to live with animals that suffered from this. 
So I tell you what, we're going to go to commercial, and when we come back, I'm going to have one of the foremost authorities about this, Dr. Danny Cox, and we're going to be talking about spaying and neutering and the advancements in veterinarian medicine when it comes to sterilization. We'll be right back. Did you know that by simply giving one dose of the gift for life twice daily will assist your pet's own natural defense against progressive aging, hormone loss, joint disease, and prevention of certain cancers? The gift for life stimulates your pet's own endocrine system and enhances the small amount of hormones present in the adrenal glands with amazing rejuvenation and anti-aging effects on the cellular level. When we spay or castrate our pets, we lose all but 1% of these life-giving hormones. So it's very important to give your pet the gift for life every day to enhance a healthier, happy life. This amazing, chewable peptide treat is fast-acting and highly effective. I use it in my practice for all patients that have had these elective surgeries or any pet that is over 8 years old. Hey, this is Larson Crockett, and we're back with Your Pets Radio, and I have Dr. Danny Cox with me. Danny, we've got some stuff to talk about today. You know my passion. You know how I feel about this, and as a guardian for pets and a pet longevity expert. And, you know, you and I have spoken a lot about this and we've exchanged a lot of information. So today, we gotta put it on the line. We've gotta put it on the line. I've got the study here, you know the study. It came out in 2013. Yes, it did, and I've, I've basically uh, uh, talked about that study repeatedly since, uh, since 2013 as a uh, support for what we try to offer at our practices and what I encourage veterinarians all across the country to do, to learn how to do, and uh, that includes ovary sparing spays in the females, uh, vasectomies, and non-surgical neutering in the males. Uh, so we leave those valuable hormones in place. Okay, those hormones are so valuable for the cellular receptor sites to react. They're also so important for the hip plates to close up. So everybody says, oh, this breed just has hip dysplasia. That's not true. The truth is, we're neutering and we're spaying too early, and these pets don't have a chance to have a normal life. This is not how God designed them, and shame on us for doing this. To get past that, <laughs> okay, you know, we do have an overpopulation problem here. Yes, we do. So, in the past, we've done spaying and neutering, but we've made advancements. So, first, let's talk about vasectomies. Okay. Tell me about vasectomies well, and why, how hard is it? Is it more Is it more expensive and how effective is it? Generally, it's not more, more expensive at all. It's, uh, it's a relatively, uh, uh, can be a relatively routine procedure once you learn how to do it. Uh, it's, um, it's as simple, it's probably simpler than doing a, a true castration. Uh, it's just a matter of learning, uh, learning how to do it. And uh, most veterinarians are not trained to do that. We're trained to, uh, from the time we're in veterinary school all the way through practice, to remove the testicles and to uh, uh, physically castrate the animal. And uh, my, my position on it is uh, the vasectomies are an easy way to leave those hormones in place and allow the, uh, the normal development uh, that as and longevity said, of these yeah, pets. Longevity. It's uh, you know there's a lot of there's there's multiple studies going back decades that show that the pets that stayed uh, intact and did not were not neutered at an early age um, lived several years longer with less uh, problems that we see from the ones that we neuter at an early age. The the fact that many veterinary practices, uh, most veterinary practices will uh, encourage people to, to uh, neuter or spay their pet at a young age, like six months is kind of an arbitrary That's number. That's ridiculous. Well, I think, it's, I think in some cases, uh, as dogs, uh, you know, they get larger and larger and larger, people have a hard time dealing with it. One of the biggest, uh, what I feel is, is, is not an accurate uh, representation is that if you neuter the dog, you will uh, change his behavior. And that's just not the case. You change, you modify behavior through training and teaching the pet. You don't do it with a scalpel. In other words, take responsibility for the animal. Exactly. Take responsibility for the animal. And, um, you know, we, we encourage people with large and giant breed dogs in our practice to have uh, vasectomies or uh, ovary sparing spays. And uh, when it's available again, we'll do uh, zinc neutering. It's, uh, you know what? it's a Doc, great product. Dr. Danny, you know that Officer Brenda Martin mm -hmm from Wiley Police Department, you know, I've worked with her police canine units for years. And she contacted me and she said, Lorston, what, what do I do? Because I'm really nervous about doing the, uh, the neutering. 
and I had her get in contact with you. And she brought two of her police canine units over here. And let's roll the video. And we'll talk about what's happening here with zinc neutering. Look how easy this is and how effective it is. Here's Officer Brenda. She arrives at the shot spot, correct? Yeah, that's our practice in McKinney, Texas. Officer and, Brenda, uh, she's my girl. She's uh, she's an interesting person. She uh, she loves those dogs. And she's oh, yeah. had multiple uh, uh Canine officers. And she's won multiple awards with her dogs also. So we're just weighing First in. thing we do is we weigh them. we got to get an accurate weight. Uh, this is uh, what we're going to be doing here is uh, non-surgical neutering, uh, zinc neutering. And uh, we get a weight. We do a complete physical on them when they come in. And uh, that's what uh, mm -hmm. our technician here is doing. And that's what I'm doing is just examining the pet and, uh, you know, making them feel more comfortable about what we're going to do. I'm talking to Dr. Brenda here about what we do uh, the technicians in the background are preparing the medications for sedation we do it under light sedation so just uh, a twilight sleep twilight sleep the dog will uh, we give this uh, they go they go under it's uh, got a little bit of pain medicine in there they're immediately down uh, where we can operate with them uh, but this is such around. a light light procedure that you said that the dogs can actually hear the handler oh, yeah. or the owner oh yeah and then what we do is we we prep the uh the scrotal area we don't shave it you don't want to cause any unnecessary in, uh, irritation those little botox needles i'm uh, saying little botox needles uh we we measure the testicle and we have a little specialized uh patented caliper that we measure with and then we uh decide on the dosage per the size of the testicle okay and uh, there are limits on it they can be too small and they can be too large so we have to make sure we get the the correct dosage for each testicle uh, we're filling up the parenchyma or the internal structures and and these uh, animals are not in any pain they're not in any pain at all they uh, if you give it too fast or you give it incorrectly you can stimulate the stretch receptors in the in the, around the testicle and that's what causes pain uh, it's not the injection itself uh, and then post uh, treatment you'll uh, see some swelling just from increasing the volume in that testicle. But Dr. Danny, can I interject for a second? You don't even have gloves on. I don't no. even see any sterilization it's not here. A ster it's not a sterile procedure. There's not a need for it. We're not cutting anything. We're not opening anything. We're simply giving an injection of a of a uh, zinc compound into the testicle. It destroys the Sertoli cells, which produce sperm. Uh, the uh, part of the testosterone cells uh, uh, that produce testosterone and the outflow tracks from the uh, uh, from the testicles so that if there's any sperm that are in there they can't get out okay and, and they're they, able to keep 50 percent of their life-giving hormones and now exactly. you're doing a tattoo so people know that this animal we put a zinc z tattoo on there so that anybody that sees them will see the testicles and they go oh, well he's not neutered then they see the z and that tells them that he is zinc neutered and you get a certificate uh at re when the pet's released to you and this takes about 20 minutes, 25, 30 minutes at the most from the time you walk in, get the weight, we get the procedure done, and then we give a reversal agent uh, in a minute that the dog uh, just reverses that light sedation and they're up and they walk out. You'll see that in a few minutes. We're given a 24-hour uh, pain management. Uh, uh, when you say it's not really pain, it's more inflammation. We're going to get inflammation from giving that medication into the testicle and we want to minimize the effects of that inflammation danny this looks so simple it's very simple it's uh, i've been doing it now for about uh seven years and uh done a lot taught a lot of veterinarians how to do it uh it's unfortunately the product is uh currently unavailable uh and we expect it to be back uh, available um very soon um but uh, right now we, we we're not able to do this procedure, and it's sad because see he's this is literally a matter of minutes, and he's waking up, and in a few minutes he'll walk out and get. Well, his Officer car Brenda said she was in and out of there in 20 minutes with each basically. Yeah, each pup. It's basically each pet. She was she was with us about an hour for one for each pet. Okay, I've I've also spoken to Officer Brenda multiple times since this procedure, and she is so happy and thrilled that she did this. There's no complications. The dogs are doing fantastic. And they're back in full training within two days. Yeah, there and and that's the beauty of it. I mean, like we've done hunting dogs, we've done uh, agility dogs, uh, and they're back doing their thing uh, very quickly. And uh, see, she's pretty happy there. And uh, I didn't even tell her to smile. She just yeah. did it naturally, you know. But uh, there's no cones on their head. No cones. They don't have to wear a cone. There's no incisions to lick. There's they 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 might get a little uncomfortable. So that's why we give them the the uh, uh, pain management for a few days. Okay. So yeah. you know what? This is what I vote on. And you know what? And people start making appointments now because 
You don't have to rush immediately, which I've spoken to so many people that said, well, I've got this dog. I have to go out and immediately spay and neuter. Really, why? Well, what about testicular cancer? You and I have discussed that a dog has as much chance of getting testicular cancer as I do and you do. Yeah. It's not, it's not as common. You know, there's a lot of argument out there, or there's some arguments out there, I should say, uh, that uh, the reason we don't see testicular cancer that much in dogs is because we neuter them. Okay. Well, that's, that's not the case because many, many dogs don't, uh, are not neutered. And uh, we're and and live full lives that are that are unneutered, and especially dogs as you've mentioned before from Europe, and uh, you know we see a lot of these police dogs. A lot of them come from uh, out of this country. Well, we we don't want to discuss this. You know, why are we importing, you know, German shepherds and police canine officers from Czechoslovakia? Is it because there's a stronger genetic breed over there because they're not inbreeding like the, some uh, I, I think trainers that has, are doing here? that has some things to do with it. The inbreeding is can be an issue, but uh, uh, they don't traditionally spay and neuter their pets over there. And that's another show I'd like to talk about with the AKC, with these registered pets. They do allow inbreeding, and, and uh, I, I think they kind of frown on it, but it's actually allowed, and maybe we should discuss that in the future. But let's get back to where we are today because we've got enough on our plate, yeah. and we've stirred the pot a little bit because, you know what, again, I'm going to tell you, we, we believe in spaying and neutering because of the overpopulation of pets, but if we've made an advancement in veterinary and medicine for sterilization, why aren't we using it? Well, I think we're, we're not using it generally because it's hard to change uh, the public's mind. It's hard to change but the But it's the right decision to make. It is the right decision to make, and I've been uh, made a, a, a passion of mine has been to encourage people. That's why we do ovary sparing space or offer that in our practice. Not everyone wants to do that, but... You know, you, you think about it in humans, how important the hormones are, both in men and women, as we age. I got a call yesterday about our human side of this Genostem, and a man was talking about wanting to get over synthetic testosterone and get on Genostem right. Pro because of all the side effects that he's you know, Absolutely, him. and and you see that in, in, in people as well. So having those natural hormones is, is tremendously valuable to these pets right um, you know we encourage people with large and giant breed dogs I have a great Dane uh, I did a ovary sparing spay and a stomach tack uh, to avoid uh, uh, gastric dilatation or bloat uh, when she was six months old and I watched her over the last three years she's now four years old uh, four and a half and she has developed naturally no joint issues no hip issues uh, her head and her body uh, developed naturally right uh, she you know, you still know when she's in her estrus cycle, but not because she's discharging, just because of her attitude. That's probably because she only lets you sit on the couch. <laughs> that's it. She, yeah, I'm about it. You know, that's her. That's her domain. You know. Uh, yeah. it, it, so, I guess we're going to have to come back to that. If you do spay and neuter, we understand there's advancements that you know about. We're going to keep talking about that and bringing this to you. But also, if you're a shelter out there, if you're an organization and you're using veterinarians and they don't know how to do leave and spay ovaries, if they don't know how to do zinc neutering, if they don't know how to do vasectomies, I can promise you that Your Pets Radio and our sponsor, The Gift for Life, will sponsor a seminar. I'd even like to shoot video that you can actually get a certification from Dr. Danny. Dr. Danny, if you're interested in doing this and teaching these vets and let's change this and let's give these animals their, their life back. Let's stop this hip dysplasia and all these other side effects of cancer and Cushing's and Addison's hypothyroidism and diabetes we can do better our pets deserve better these shelters it's not doesn't cost more money it's actually so easy to do than giving these full operations this is what's so frustrating to me as a pet health and longevity expert because I felt the pain myself losing pets because of this and I see it every day with these other dogs aging faster with more disease. Yeah, I, I'll step in there and tell you that uh, these studies show the, the joint disease is, is virtually uh, uh, cut sometimes in half or by 70 percent. Uh, cruciate injuries go down, uh, splenic tumors go down, hip dysplasia decreases, diabetes cases, thyroid uh, issues what go down. What about the cancer in the larger breeds? And in my dog, the big thing is the number one breed to die as a result of osteosarcomas, bone cancers, are Great Danes. Right. And I uh, didn't want that to happen. My dog, uh, the average lifespan on those on the traditional uh, Great Dane that's been spayed or neutered, especially at a young age, is eight years or less. And um, I'm expecting her to be, uh, I'd love to see her, you know, at least 12, 13, 14 years of age. 
Uh, and that's sad. I want her to live forever. But, uh, you know, unfortunately in our, in our world, uh, that doesn't happen. The pets are here for a short time, and we're the stewards of, of their life. And Well, Burmese mountain dogs, they have such a short oh, lifespan. Don't you think they should definitely have this? They should have this opportunity. Yeah, I, I, I encourage everybody with large and giant breed dogs. And if you're going to do a, a traditional spay or neuter, don't do it before they're 18 to 24 months of age. Not right. just 12. 12 on just about everybody else. But but on those large and giant breeds, especially the giant breed dogs, wait. Because you'll allow them to develop the normal hormone uh, uh, activities that affects every aspect of their body. And if you do spay and neuter, we just ask you to give the gift for life twice a day. The gift for life is a peptide. It also has naturally occurring growth factors that actually stimulate the adrenal cortex in a pet that will help them produce 24 lost hormones with amazing results and for senior pets over the age of eight yeah this is also a go-to for you now also so are you in agreement that we need this hormonal support for dogs and cats that have been spayed and neutered oh i think so i think the gift for life is the best uh uh supplement that i've i've been able to find that that you know helps with both it's it's economical i mean it's 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 uh, less expensive than some of the heavier uh, steroids and things out there that we have to give, and it's much safer. I mean, the dogs uh, can eat a whole bottle of that and may get a GI upset, but they're not going to uh, have any major. Well, that's just from dis- carbohydrates yeah. and a bit of flavoring. Yeah. The peptides won't hurt you. And I, and it doesn't. It's not. It's not the panacea for every case. But if you've got a dog that's been neutered or spayed at a young age, uh, or in general, or over the age of eight years of age. I recommend that product. Well, you use it in your practice. I use it in my practice. I use it at home uh, with my pets. I've got all age ranges of pets, and uh, they're, uh, you know, some of them are zootered, some of them over a sparing space, some of them are traditional. Right. And uh, but all of them love the gift for life, and I think it benefits them in so many ways: cognitive issues, joint disease, uh, endocrine issues. Um, it's amazing well, what we're I've, able to, to kickstart that endocrine see. system that's and, been in harm's way because of these elective surgeries. Exactly, and I emphasize it's 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 not uh, for every pet may not you may not see the things you're uh, effective immediately, but give it time, and many times the the things you want to see as a result of this, the condition you're giving it for. Uh, you'll see some, I feel like you'll see some improvement. Uh, it well, can help. Well, you've actually help. said on it the radio that you it. don't have any drugs that can do with this peptide. I technology. don't have any drugs that can do what I see with this and, and be safe and effective long term. Right. So this isn't a commercial today about the gift for life. We're just letting you know that there is alternative to give hormonal support if you've already done the elective surgery of spaying and neutering. So, yeah. Dr. Danny, we've covered a lot today. We usually do. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. And so, listen, this is Larson Crocker with the pet vet, Dr. Danny Cox. I tell you what, we're going to be right back, and I'm going to give an invitation to the SBCA and also Operation Kindness. Stay tuned. The ShotSpot mobile wellness trucks travel the Dallas metro area providing vaccinations, heartworm testing and prevention, flea and tick prevention, wellness exams, and more for dogs and cats. Thursday through Sunday each week. You can find our schedule of events and the gift for life by going to theshotspot.org or follow us on Facebook. ShotSpot, a full-service hospital is located in McKinney, Texas at 1827 West Louisiana Street or call us at 844-PETSHOT. That's 844-PETSHOT. And we love the the, uh, the ShotSpot with all your vans going out and giving vaccinations that are... We, that people can afford, and they're like mini uh, mobile units, mass units. I've been inside one; they're amazing. They're fun. I, I I think as a veterinarian, it's it's one of the most enjoyable things that I've I've done is to go out on those uh, community events uh, on the weekends and work in those trucks and see the the smile and the appreciation from the clients that we're able to make it affordable for them. And uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's wellness. It's it's uh, we're not amputating legs on those trucks but we've got a place to do that as you saw i'll tell you what if there's an emergency i know you can get it back to the clinic and keep <laughs> yeah, them stable on the way we do and so it's really good and we've enjoyed uh participating in that and having that out there well danny before the show started you know how passionate i can be about these animals as, as a guardian huh <laughs> yeah I and know. as a pet in health longevity especially with the knowledge that we've gained today and with the new science and sterilization of pets so we actually when the show first started laura one of our directors reached out to the spca 
and I wanted a pet of the week because it's so important to go to these shelters and adopt. You know, my big boy, Max, uh, you guys have seen him on the show before. I absolutely love Max. He's one of the best dogs I've ever had. And I got him from the Plano shelter and I was so lucky to get him. But we reached out to the SPCA and they would not give your pets radio a pet of the week. They basically wrote back and said, hi, Laura, after discussing the potential partnership between the SPCA of Texas and Lauriston, your pets radio with our VP and communications and our president and CEO, we feel that some of the ideas behind the product don't align with the organization's mission. Due to this, we do not think pursuing a partnership will work with us at this time. And we're talking about Mr. James Bias of the SPCA. Um, James, listen, it's not only you. I actually, uh, Dr. Danny, you and I are on Good Morning Texas. We were. I got a call afterwards from Jim Hanafy, the CEO of Operation Kindness here in Dallas. I actually went over and met with him. We spoke about the harm of spaying and neutering. He knows it. We sat down and we spoke about the gift for life and the advancements we can make to help these animals and send them home healthier. Um, but basically he wanted me to supply the gift for life to the Operation Kindness. There's not something that I could just do for free. Corporation couldn't do that. But we also spoke about Dr. Danny and I coming over to Operation Kindness and speaking with your vets and talking about these advancements that we've made because it's the right thing to do, gentlemen, for these animals. It's the right thing to do to send these pets home healthier for a longer disease, less disease in their life. And um, so what I'm going to do is basically is I'd like to invite you on the show. I'd like to invite Jim Anfi for the CEO of Operation Kindness on your pet radio, along with James Bias from the SBCA Dallas. Come on the show. We have many things in common. We love these animals. We want the best for them. I'd like Dr. Danny Cox to be here too. And let's discuss this advancement that we've made in the pet health and sterilization and what we can do to advance and help these dogs and cats live a longer, healthier life. The invitation's open. We're gonna make sure we give you a call also. So listen, it's been a show today that is gonna shake the trees for a lot of people, get a lot of people thinking. If you've spayed and neutered your pet, you know what? Don't be angry about it. Don't get scared about it. We can still help with the peptide technologies. In the future, if you plan on doing a sterilization of your pets because you're worried about controlling the overpopulation, I understand. I'm with you. I'm with you. The amount of pets that are put down every year is absolutely heartbreaking, and it's something I think about every day, as I know Dr. Danny does also, because you and I have discussed this. Right. But yeah. we can do better. The technology is there to do better. So think about it. If you've got any questions, you can always reach out to me at Crockett at thegiftforlife.com. I can always put you in contact with Dr. Danny Cox. Um, if you'd like to think about these procedures for your pets, then please reach out to Dr. Danny at the Shot Spot in McKinney, Texas. And Dr. Danny, how can they contact you? Uh, probably best through the through the hospital, uh, and that's uh, as you saw earlier, eight four four pet shot, and they can, uh, uh, and then my, uh, you can send me an email at danny dot cox at the pet vet dot com. That's the easiest way. And the great yeah. thing about you is, you always call people back. I try. I've <laughs> sent people to you. They go. I try. But who's going to call me? I said, Doctor Danny will call you. He's going to yeah. reach out to you because he cares about your pet, and he means that a lot to him. Listen, this is Orson Crockett with Dr. Danny Cox with Your Pets Radio. I absolutely love you guys. I love your pets. We're here for you. We can do better. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Your Pets Radio. Visit yourpetsradio.com for more content. And remember, reach out to us on social media. We'd love to feature you on the show.